And something happened where Malcolm had to postpone it for a while. I forget what that was. So finally, we, we're going to do, be discussing Christopher Nolan's Inception, which is, and something is good. Happened where Malcolm... Ah. So, yeah. Sorry, I only realised I caught the beginning of that. <laughs> it missed the beginning of that. Basically, I'll start again. Um, we, I apologise for this being um, delayed somewhat. Uh, it was delayed partly because something has happened with Malcolm. Also, I was standing for um, district... Um, Hang on. Something's not. Where is it? Ah, here we are. Um, third time lucky. Um, <laughs> sorry, things are distracting me that are very important that I have to deal with uh, there and then. So that's why I've been pausing and stopping. Just to say that uh, apologies for this being delayed about two or three times. Uh, Malcolm had one, two things going on. I was standing for, I found myself to a pleasant surprise being the Labour candidate uh, for Briggles Wade West uh, for Central Bedfordshire Council. And uh, that took up a lot of time. So that had to, so this had to be postponed twice. But finally, we're going to be discussing Christopher Nolan's Inception, which uh, was Malcolm's choice. So he'll probably be taking the lead on this. And uh, yes, he'll be in a few minutes. Because I haven't done this for a while, I thought I'd better set this up early. And I've set this up way, way too early. So I've got to use whatever media skills I have and I've got a degree in media practices, believe it or not, um, to keep you occupied on the air for seven minutes. So I've got to keep you entertained. Um, I'll start off by mentioning, uh, Malcolm and I, on average, give or take, do film reviews on, on uh, social media once a month and on my YouTube page. Uh, and broadcast simultaneously on uh, my blog. And I will, which reminds me, I do need to put this in. Now, if at any point you want to take part in this discussion, uh, please feel free to, uh, either by leaving a comment on the chat area on our YouTube um, page, or uh, even better, even more so, leave a comment uh, on on this blog. On the if you read looking at this on the blog page, uh, leave a comment, and we'll. Uh, what I'll do during the discussion is check the comments on the blog page where this is being seen. And also, I will be checking the um, YouTube page and seeing what discussions are, are being made. So hopefully, uh, that will all be fine and dandy. And yes, we've got five minutes to go. So what I will do is do a spot of copy and pasting. And uh, yes, hopefully it's uh, <laughs> all there on tender hooks, one hopes. And, uh, Yes, it'll be interesting to see what we say. Um, I've never really seen the film before. So it's not something I would have... It's not out of dislike. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But it's not a film I, would, I was, would have gone out of the way to see. 
Uh, but we shall uh, see how it all pans out. But, uh, hmm. Marvel, here we go. And uh, I hope you've all had a wonderful day. It's nearly the end of the week and in the UK, if you're not watching it, we're having a bank holiday. And uh, yeah, I'll be working less because then, you know, there's the rail strikes are a bit of a pain. And uh, then we've got the, um, I, I've got a uh, going away for the weekend with my wife on holiday. So, well, a weekend holiday, a weekend holiday is like a mini break, really. But I think we both needed it. So, yeah, or we'll both need it. Present tense rather than past. But uh, hopefully it's... Uh, all going to be relaxing from now but, and we've got two minutes to go so if you've joined us quite early welcome uh, as i've said to uh, previous people we this has been somewhat delayed because it, in the meantime i found myself since the last such live stream film discussion i found myself standing for council in central bedfordshire the labour party but uh, in the biggles wade west area and uh, Malcolm had to deal one, two things. So it was sort of cancelled at last minute on two occasions. And uh, I'm expecting Malcolm to appear in the next couple of minutes. And uh, hopefully we will be having a ball. I, I do want to, now I'm sort of back in gear, as it were, I do want to do more of these online discussions things political and films and everything that's sort of connected mars hill blog so if you have any ideas or want to contribute again do let us do let me know but uh keep keep uh keep watching and uh, see what there is and malcolm's entered the waiting room and he's connecting Can't hear me yet, so here's an opportunity to say what a wonderful person Malcolm is. <laughs> and uh, all the other things that would embarrass him. But here we go. Good evening, Malcolm. Good evening. Hold on. Jack. Number one. Hey, my How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. A bit tired. Um, right. Yeah. Rachel and I are off to Suffolk this weekend, and I've had a full-on day. I had to get up at um, 5 a.m. this right. morning to work, so <laughs> I did get the opportunity to uh, have a uh, rest. So Okay, busy day. Yeah, and three people are watching now, which means someone else is watching us other than us. Sure, sure. So Inception, uh, yeah. let, let's... This is somewhat unlike any of the other films we've discussed. We've discussed several Bond films. We've discussed... Uh, was Did we discuss A Man Four Seasons? We did, yeah. We did. We did. We also, uh, there's one about the... With Mar, um, Martin Sheen about the... Uh, the Way. Yeah, The Way. So this is slightly different. And Inception, it's dystopian sci-fi would perhaps cover sort of what it is, but it wouldn't do it full justice. Mm. So could you, could you kind of explain why you chose this? Well, I'm a total Christopher Nolan fanboy. Yeah. First and yeah. foremost, that's why I chose it. And Inception, it's probably my favourite of his films. Some of his other pictures are brilliant. The Dark Knight, Dark Knight Returns, Dunkirk, uh, yeah. Bennett. Uh, but this one, um, 
It's just the best. It's such a good story. I don't think it's a million miles from, say, the Bond films. It's certainly sci-fi fantasy version of Bond, if you like. Um, yes. But, um, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I first saw the film in the cinema. I was totally confused by it. I think yes. I was really confused the next five times I watched it on video. Um, it It's re really intelligent filmmaking. It doesn't yeah. feed you everything on the plate. It makes you think about what's going on, uh, what's happening. Yeah. And well, I love that about um, Christopher Nolan. He mm. treats the viewers like adults. Uh, yes. Not all filmmakers do, you know, certainly not in Hollywood. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's just a, a really good story, a brilliant cast. Mm. Everyone is just perfect in it. So, um, yeah, I was dead keen to uh, discuss it because of that. It's a, a impression I got from it. And it's, it's almost like The Matrix, about halfway through the first Matrix yeah. Where your sense of, I mean, we're watching films that are sent, we're not watching documentaries, we're watching fictional films. But <laughs> your perceptive your perception of the story you're being told is the story you're being told or not. And because I'm the reason I say this, because I'm tempted to say you're not sure what's real or what isn't. But within the fictional <laughs> realm you're given at the start, you're not sure what is at some point like the matrix you're not sure what's part of the fictional realm within the fictional realm or what is yeah. meant to be the reality of that within that fictional realm i think with the matrix um you you're taken on a journey through the eyes yeah. of the world, and it's a, in due course it's established what's going on so yeah. what's real what isn't at the start you don't know but as the story unfolds, you do find out what's real, mm. uh, life outside the matrix, what isn't inside, life yeah. inside it. But there's no such uh, luck or joy with Inception uh, because quite deliberately it's kept going till the end. Or rather, it, there's, it's a twist at the end with the little spinning top, uh, mm. Cobb's totem when uh, the last scene of- Careful the film, about spoilers. <laughs> oh yeah, well, spoiler alert, oh, come on, it's 10 years old if you haven't seen it already, but yeah, spoiler alerts. Oh. Um, the, the spinning top doesn't stop and it's supposed to if he's back in the real world. Yes. So has the camera gone to black, faded out before it stopped or is he actually still in his dream world after all? So the film doesn't let the viewer off the hook. You've got to make Nolan very democratically, you could say, hands it over to the viewer, the individual viewer to say, yeah. to decide, yes, that was real or no, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's, an, I mean, both approaches are legitimate. The Matrix isn't worse because it tells you what's real and isn't. Mm -hmm. But um, it's great to have a film that, just offers it up to you totally and says, you decide your reality, yes. just like the characters in the film. Yes. So what would you, what did you decide as an individual was uh, real and what wasn't? Oh, well, I absolutely wanted uh, the conclusion to be real because I love a happy ending. Yes. I am a total normie like that. I imagine most film goes want happy endings and I'm one of them. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, that was uh, my decision or for me. Uh, yes. It's a, it's a real, it's a, it's the happy ending. There'd be, I would be quite cheesed off if I got to the end of the picture and, oh, it's still undecided or it was all for nothing, which is for me what it would be. Yeah. Uh, if he was still in the dream. So uh, I don't mind if someone else says, um, no, for me it wasn't, but no, I take the opposite view. How about you? Yeah. 
I, I got the impression, I, I suppose like everyone else wanted the, the ending to be reality. It would have been awful if it was part of the awful, there was a dichotomy in that he, the hero played by the one we're talking about, Dom Cobb, played by Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. He is clearly wanting to escape from the parts of him that are, I suppose like all of us, wants to escape from things that he dislikes about himself and things he, he has re- regretted. Yeah. It, uh, in his case, criminal activity. Um, but you're wondering how much of it is, there's that thing where at some point in film you're wondering, is he escaping and not facing up? Or is he doing both? And you get the impression he's doing both. He, he's trying to do both, which is the de- he's trying a new start. He's trying to face up, which is the decent and honourable thing. So in the end, you do hope it's reality because it would be hor- horrifically sad if it wasn't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a dreadful situation that he's in. Yeah. But one that... This adds an, an extra level to it. It's yeah. not as it, it's not the case that he is facing criminal charges in America um, uh, simply unjustly. I the actions of someone else. It's his own actions. It's a great twist. It's his own actions that have got him into this situation. It was him yeah. who is the ultimate cause for Mole becoming um, or losing her sense of reality. Yeah. So it, it adds that an extra layer of, of tragedy to the story for him, especially for her, because, of course, she dies. Yeah. Um, yeah, the guilt he feels as evidenced by the presence of Mole, a hostile yeah. presence in his subconscious. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... It, the depth of the film is... Uh, always impresses me but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. interestingly it was i mean I, it's an all-star cast mm. um i think i'm not sure was it pete Postlethwaite's last film i think it possibly was yeah yeah or oh, one of them i know it's one of them no it was i just looked it up it was his um third second from last film in other words the film before his penultimate film so he needed oh, okay. two more films nice. like that but um yeah as one of his last one of his last three films yeah third from last it, it's does you know there, there's a one of the for me, not so much chilling, but one of the more heartbreaking lines in a film um, I've ever heard is actually in the film version of... Have you ever seen the film version of Porridge? No, I don't think so. Unless it was a long, long time ago. Yeah. Fletcher and Gobbert unwittingly find themselves outside of prison. They have to break back in because they don't want to be in the run all their lives. They want to... Get their do their point, get out and try and make an honest living themselves. So this the last third third of the film is them trying to break back into prison, and obviously they're successful. And I find it Gobber is just feeling morose because he's had a slight taste of freedom and he's had to give it up. And uh, there's a line where, where Fletcher says to Gobba, something along the lines, you've, you've got your parole coming up, you know. And if you know the background story in real, real life, the film, it's heartbreaking hearing that line because Richard Beckinsale died about six weeks after that, that was filmed. Hmm. So there's a sort of, you've got your parole coming up. <laughs> yeah, there's a real life. So you do get with Pete Postlethwaite this, sense of a man who's yeah you know in real life was I don't know if he was struggling with cancer already by then I suspect he was it could be wrong mixed with 
you know, it, art imitating life, I think, is the cliche line. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, um, he's, yeah, he's not obviously not in the film a great deal. So perhaps that's why. Yeah. Um, but um, he's a um, very key role. And yeah. uh, there's um, it is re some great lines in the film. Um, yes. and, and performances um, as well, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How would you, what, what, um, who do you think gave the best, aside from Pete Possefwait and Leonardo DiCaprio, who do you think gave the best performances and why? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> that's a question and a half. It is. Well, it's probably just as well you said after them, or particularly after Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, well, I, I think it's, I could cycle through them. Um, mm. uh, jo uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Levitt? Yes. Um, is really good as Cobb's, DiCaprio's uh, number two. Yes. Um, what Ken Watanabe, uh, Watanabe really yes, good definitely. as the boss. Um, yes. probably just as dodgy as uh, Postlethwaite uh, is his character is, yes, uh, but very cool. Tom, he did his own stunts, apparently. Really, yeah, well, uh, I respect any actor who does his own stunts, yeah. Um, they're mad. Not Ken Wontabu, I mean, um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt did, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, um, but um, uh, uh, um, Elliot Page? Yes. Brilliant, as Ariadne. Yeah. Um, the way... Now, so what do we say for... Sh now a man, but then a woman, do we say she or he? What's the correct way? Um, I believe it's to respect their pronouns. So, so what, as currently are. As currently are. So, so. he, um, the way, so once he's introduced, uh, he's got the um, scepticism. Yeah. And he susses out uh, Cobb pretty yeah. quickly but then goes in anyway into the dreams because yeah. he's got he's got to in yeah. order to help it no to stop well to help him to stop mole from ruining everything um yeah. tom hardy i'm particularly fond of him yeah. and arthur together as i said on twitter earlier the frenemies i wish for a film with those two because they're such a couple like an old couple um they're back and forth or pals from the past. I could really do with a film just of those two. Tom and Hardy is a scene uh, 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 Choose scenery, doesn't he? He, 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 he he's does. one of his actors. He, he's in a film. And <laughs> it, it's not his looks. It's not his charisma as such. Or no, his charisma would play a part in it. He's a really good actor. But he, 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 you, yeah, you, he steals. He steals it. And if. If anyone is in any doubt that mm. he's got good range, I mean, you watch him in the, the craze where he right. really shows the differences. He plays both Rennie and Roggie. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. Rennie, Reggie and Ronnie C Cray. And he really shows the differences between the twins in personality. Right. As well as obviously the slight physical differences that identical yeah. twins have as they get older. But yeah. you can, he's... Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, he's so good. Um, Killian Murphy, yes, is also brilliant. Um, who gives the best performance though? I, you know, I just not sure I could really say with any honesty that one of them is better than all the others. No. Um, they're all in in the roles they inhabit. Yeah, they're just perfect. I couldn't imagine any other actor playing those parts. Yes. Uh, so uh, I would have to be totally evasive about that and say 
Yeah. I can't I can't give an answer for that. They've all well, uh, Marion, Marion uh, Cotillard, who have a slight soft spot for... Of course, um, her as well, yeah. 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 Only because um, we're just about exactly the same age. <laughs> right. <laughs> as in there's just hours, uh, uh, or possibly I don't know what time she was born, but uh, <laughs> right. we, we were born on the same day. Um, no, she is really she good. Does a, she does a very good performance. Um, and... Also, Michael Caine. Oh, Michael Caine, yeah, yeah. He certainly had a, a second, an Indian summer with um, Christopher Nolan. Yes, and they, he, I noticed Christopher, some of the actors in this, the actors, directors do this, but some are more obvious than others. Yeah. And I, I hate to say this because it, it, it denotes lack of subtlety in Christopher Nolan. Um, is not a director that lacks subtlety, <laughs> but he uses. I mean, Cillian Murphy, uh, Michael Caine, yeah. The, these are Tom Hardy. These are actors he's used before yeah. and have used after. So, yeah. I mean, he did. Did he direct the Prestige, Christopher Nolan? He did. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first film of his I saw. Yeah, was that Tom? Oh, that was a well. That no, was that was Christopher Bale. Bale. Yeah, Christopher. Another, Bale. another Christopher Nolan actor. Well, I mean, he is yeah. but another actor Christopher Nolan uses. Yeah. I mean, um, this is this is not um, unusual for actors to to for directors to use some of the same actors. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, if you ever see Richard Attenborough's films, he he. When you see the list of films Richard Attenborough directed, he used Anthony Hopkins again and again. Right. Uh, they understand each other, I guess. Sorry? They understand each other, the, yes, was, what the director wants. He um, was in uh, Young Winston, where he played David Lloyd George, A Bridge Too Far, where he played Lieutenant Colonel Frost. Uh, no, no, sorry, I'm just going... He wasn't in Gandhi and he wasn't in Coruscant. He wasn't in Coruscant, but he was in the. Um, he was in Chaplin, and he was in Shadowlands. So that was um, four films. No, five because he did Magic straight after Bridge Too Far. So he, I, at least five films of Sir Anthony Hopkins were directed by Richard Attenborough. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I think I've just seen a couple of those. Yeah. Well, with Gandhi, Chaplin, and... Well, Chaplin. he wasn't in Gandhi, is what I was saying. That was, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, okay. that's the most yeah. famous one, just yeah. about that. But he was in uh, Young Winston, A Bridge Too Far, Magic, uh, Chaplin, and Shadowlands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, do actor, you know, these act, act, directors do like to have their own stable. Joseph Lossi used to have Dirk Bogard in a number of his films. I mean, Steven Spielberg, um, yeah, I suppose Harrison Ford, you know, be, there's some actors who they, yeah, but Spielberg's as much known as a producer as well as a director. Yeah, it makes sense. If they they know who the actor is, they know how yeah. they work, they can get into their comfort zones a lot quicker, I imagine. Yeah. They know what they what they're going to be getting and how they're going to be getting it. And yeah. when you have a big complicated production like I'm sure Inception was, I imagine that's quite important. Hit the ground running. Um, One of the things um where Things change. I mean, the special effects in in Inception was brilliant, but one of the things that struck me were the Penrose stairs. Do you know what I mean by the Penrose yes, stairs? Yeah, this, the, sta- the eternal stairs. Yes, which is, it does your head in when you look at them. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cleverly done. Yes, it, it's almost like a visual Sisyphus, isn't it, when you get there? <laughs> so he climbing, climbing, climbing. But it is. Was- that um, the thug. Who gets chucked off? Yeah, so not so good for him. Yeah, but it um, reminds me of um, 
Escher's Castrovalva. You know E.C. Escher, the artist. And uh, if you just bear with me, um, I will do a link on our YouTube play page. Um, but Castrovalva, and it was in Doctor Who, Who referred to this in Tom in um, sorry Peter Davison's first adventure as the Doctor. Just about to ask, I thought that sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah, um, and it was, and it, it wasn't a coincidence it, it, because it, the the story is called Castrovalva, and it referred it um, played around um, Escher's um, description of the uh, the Italian village of Castrovalva, but within that that small within you know there were there were stuff like strange designs of stairs going around never end, you know things sort of recursing in on themselves that right. sort of recursion that you get uh in inception mm. so I, it, it's interesting that in the film some ideas with that's been that have been used in science fiction before and have you been used in art and literature before but it, it does feel like it's um i'm going to do a link to castrovalva on the wikipedia page the escher painting on uh, i can't because it's still live on youtube i'll do it in the chat um but <laughs> Uh, so not that anyone's watching at this moment, but they might be watching it, the feedback later. Yeah. So it's, and I'll leave a link on the, the under the blog, uh, post a comment. But uh, yes, it's. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, fascinating how it's done. Did you spot any familiar sci-fi tropes? Any sorry, any what tropes? Uh, any familiar sci-fi tropes as such? Um, e I'm not sure that I did. I'm sure they're there, but I don't often think about sci-fi tropes, to be honest. <laughs> um, um, I don't watch enough sci-fi films to for them to really make an impression on me. Uh, um, you're more aware of them than you would think. I, think. I, was, I was in a book discussion last night and someone mentioned that the one sci-fi trope was where they, like, for instance, you know when someone's zombified or caught a deadly plague and the first thing is they see a large green mark on their um, arm that's growing. What would you do in real life? You'd call a doctor. What does a person do in a science fiction film that's going to damage mankind? He says nothing, and or she says nothing, and that tries to hide it. <laughs> yeah, it's that guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they, they are okay. like, yeah, you know, they are around, but um, yeah, I mean, um, okay, uh, yes, I imagine <laughs> they're, they're there, but yeah. I'm, I'm just not experienced enough with. I'm sure I've seen quite a few of the films, but yeah. nothing cliché no. jumped, uh, jumped out at me. No. Um, so how would you give this film out of 10? Oh, I'd have to get... Oh, goodness. For me, it's near perfect. Yeah. So uh, it's an easy 9, well, 10 out of 10. Go for 9.5. 9.5. 9 um, I've really known you to be that specific. Yeah. Oh, this is, um, yeah, it's Christopher Nolan. Well, it's Inception and Christopher Nolan. I just, it's a, one of my go to films uh, that I could watch so yeah. many times and just really, really enjoy it. I think I've got a, a handful of films like that. Um, yeah. And it's, his film, the film of his that is in that club. Yeah. Um, it's such easy watching. And even though I know everything that's going to happen, um, doesn't matter. Mm. It's just watching the execution of the premise um, mm. of the story. So 
Um, the only reason I, if I don't give it a 10, the only reason is that there are no perfect films. Um, every film, if you look into it a bit more, you'll be able to find a fault somewhere. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, Nolan's no different. So 9.5 is as far as I can go without going to the full 10 or 9.9. Yeah. Um, because it's we haven't talked yet about um, the music and Zimmer. Yeah, Hans Zimmer, uh, who complements the story lately, so well. Yeah, and it's such simple music that he gives. Yes, um, especially time. The music at the end fits yes. the ending of the film so so well. I don't know how many notes he uses, but not too many, unlike Mozart. Um, joke for anyone who's watched Amadeus. Yes. Um, but it's just, he's, he's a brilliant, brilliant musician, is Hans yeah. Zimmer. And he's at the t absolute top of his game, I think, in this film. And he's confident enough to you. I mean, he's confident enough to use John Barry, um, part of the soundtrack to Honor Majesty's Secret Service. As part of the soundtrack to No Time to Die, as in That's, I have to admit, not a soundtrack that I was particularly impressed by when I watched no. the film. I he either writes the soundtrack, the the composes it himself, or he works with other people. Yes, uh, which he did on the Dark Knight films. Yes, and also I think on uh, No Time to Die. No, well, I have a feeling that his work is I fancy it was a bit diluted yeah. between him and the other composer. Yeah. If it was just one other person uh, on that film, because it, it was disappointingly unmemorable. Yeah. Unlike a lot of the rest of the film. Yeah. Um, that for me, in a way, that particular soundtrack, whereas Inception, it just fits the film hand in a glove. It's perfect. Mm. Um, so yeah, Hans Zimmer is, um, I think, got to be the best um, working composer in Hollywood yes. at the moment uh, today. Well, sure, John, John Williams. Williams. John Williams is still working. I think John yeah. Williams recently said something. He is he's thinking about retirement, right. which you are partly, which is totally understandable given that he is now over ninety. Yeah, I mean, uh, after him, uh, uh, it's got to be Hans Zimmer. Yes. Um, Hans Zimmer, I should say. And you don't, the thing I like about uh, Hans is that there are a lot of composers where you don't quite hear, you don't quite get what they're, you, it's not so easy these this day and age to listen to soundtracks like before, that they don't stand out so well. Or at least I, Hans Zimmer does stand out fairly well. And David Arnold stands out, but you don't, you know, we do seem to live in a world where they don't. Was that just me? <laughs> no, I think you're right. And um, why would that be? Um, it might be the composer is a so-so composer. It could be that um, the filmmaker, the director or the producer has said, we don't want standout music. We want music for the, to lift the atmosphere in the background. Yeah. So we don't want you know, something that's going to detract from the story. No. Uh, it's, I'm not experienced in how films are made, so I don't know if that would be a conversation that happens. Um, yeah. But I would imagine, I mean, a brilliant composition is no more easy to put out there than a brilliant book. And there are very few brilliant books that are published year on year. Mm. So there's no reason why there would be any more compositions of any kind film yeah. or otherwise so maybe it's the wrong way to look at it that the composers are not that good it's just that it's really really hard yeah. it could be just that it's very very hard to create a composition that will become so so well known mm. in the way that inception is uh interstellar and the dark knight uh soundtracks yeah. Uh, scores, I should say. Yeah. Um, which are really what Hans Zimmer's reputation, I think, have been built upon. 
Yeah. Um, so, well, actually, no, there's more than that, like pirates, Caribbean as well. Um, so, yeah, that would be my answer to that. It's just, it's very hard. It's hitting, finding gold in the dirt. It just doesn't happen that often. And it's a sign of his brilliance that not only has it happened once, yeah, but multiple times now. Yeah. That's, that's a, a very great rarity, I would imagine, yeah. unless you're in that elite band of composers yeah. like John Williams or Barry, mm. um, maybe one or two others besides. I do miss John Barry. Uh, yeah. When he, when he more or less retired, I was always want. It's like Cary Grant fans in the 1970s and 80s wanting him to come back to do one more film. Right. I, I was always wanting him, you, you know, but they, they say the best ones are always, you know, always a good idea to leave people wanting more. Uh, and yeah. so he did that. I would yeah. give it a seven, but only because I'm not as familiar with it. It's not something I would have naturally picked myself or got right. onto. But that doesn't mean to say I don't appreciate it. Right. And then what I what I appreciate and recognize is good, I think is very good. Yeah. So mm-hmm. on that basis, I will give it a tentative seven. If I see it a few more times, that might go up, but as mm-hmm. as a yeah. One needs it, to. Um, it, yeah, it will it'll go up. But from what I've seen of it so far. Yeah, seven. Yeah, I, I just remembered another actor in it who I forgot about earlier, the guy who plays Yusuf. He's so funny. I love him too. Um, he's got my two favourite lines in the film are when someone tells says a joke that Yusuf doesn't think is funny. Yeah, is funny, ha ha. He's yeah. really sarcastic, and the way he delivers the line is so so good. And then it's when Bondian, isn't it the dry the the sort of dry humor? It's a, yes, definitely. Yeah, and then when, Dilly Brow. Uh, okay, um, yeah, I don't know him from any other film. No. Um, and Tom think... Hardy when he gets the big gun out in the in the uh, in the warehouse, um, yeah. uh, Arthur has been shooting it out of the door with his gun, big rifle. But he gets this huge grenade launcher out and says, don't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. <laughs> it's such a funny moment. And yeah. then blows up the uh, the thug who's hiding on the rooftop. Yes. Uh, two favourite lines of mine. Yeah. But, nothing, uh, can yeah. Ever beat, nothing can ever beat, uh, in my mind, in terms of a villainous line, Hugo Drax's in Moonraker. Chang, look after Mr. Bond. See that some harm comes to him. Lots yeah. of good lines in all the James Bond films. Oh, Definitely. yes. Um, in terms of looking for another film, film to do next time, I've come to the conclusion, because I looked on BBC iPlayer, because that would be the easy yeah. way through to that. Five come to mind. And if we can whittle this down to one, which I'm sure we can, I will give you five options and tell me what you like. Vice with Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. Early Man, which is um, an Aardman film. Yeah, the Nick Park thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. The... uh, um, the Monuments Men cast with uh, George Clooney and Matt Damon. And, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, what were the other two? Uh, Mr. Jones, the uh, what about a journalist in Ukraine in the 1930s. Yeah. And yeah. The Martian. With, with Matt Damon, which is about an astronaut stuck on Mars and they're trying to get him home. That's now, do any point. of those appeal? Oh, in 1917. So, yeah, there's six. 19, the, mm-hmm. the film 1917. Um, so, any of, of those six? Do you know what? I'll let you decide because oh, oh. a number of those appeal to me. <laughs> so, and I chose this one. So, I think I'll let you decide on that one. 
Tough choices. Yeah, to I'm tempted to do an eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You should notice the um, politics. So I'm just looking at them now to see which one is it, like I really, really, really want to do. Really, really, I cannot, you know. Shall we do 1917 and then we'll do okay. the Martian okay. after that? Okay. And then it's your decision again. Okay, Derek. Okay, so 1917, the Martian. So yeah. next month, some point in late June or early July, we'll be doing uh, 1917. Okay, yeah, I saw that in the cinema. It's a great film. Yes, I've yet to see it, so this is a good opportunity. I've even got the DVD on my bookshelf and I never got around to watching it. Okay. So that that's criminal. Having it's bad enough having a book you haven't read on the show. Having the DVD, <laughs> you know, the film that you want I've, to watch never. I've got lots of books and DVDs on my shelves yeah. that I haven't watched, so I can't. Yeah. Take. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's very cleverly made one shot for ages and ages. Yeah. Possibly in the whole film, I can't remember. But um, yeah, great picture. Will do. Okay. Well, all the best. Thank and you very much. Thank you for have your a good time. evening. Yeah, and you. Thanks Glad so we got this done at long last after the very yes, <laughs> yeah. one thing and another. Uh, yeah. But yeah, well done. We we, we got there. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah.